lot of terms. Okay. So let's say, for example, first chapter. If you take a look at the first chapter, we have gone through uh, a lot of uh, concepts and terms. All right. So you need to understand what are the design principles. Okay. What are the uh, terms that we learn? So we learn some of the uh, design principles. Huh? We learn what is encapsulation, what is abstraction, correct? So what is the use of code maintainability? We also checked on code reusability, all right? So some of it is big terms. So make sure you understand the meaning of it. What is it? Right? And next we also learn our ADP collections, our collection person. We have lists, we have stack, we have queue. Alright? You need to know what is a queue, for example. Okay? You need to know what is a list. Okay? We talked about um, the definitions, we talked about the basic operation, we talked about the implementation, all right? So when I say list, you have to take a look at chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, chapter, sorry, sorry, chapter four and chapter five, right? Enough. So we talked about it in terms of definition in chapter one, in terms of ADT specification, how to write a list ADT specification in chapter 2. We also learn how to implement lists, for instance, in chapter 4 and 5. How to implement using array, how to implement using a linked list. Alright? So similarly, you have to take a look for stack. All right, and also for uh, Q. All right, so you need to know definition, you need to know how to write your ADT specification, you need to know how to implement basic operation. You also need to know what is the use application. Okay, where do you use that the most? Okay, where do you use Q? In what scenario you would use a Q? Okay. All right. So take a look at um, application of your collection list. Uh, go through application. Now beside that, make sure chapter four and five. You know how to implement, how to add into a array. Okay, how to add into a list, okay, using array implementation, how to add into a queue using a link implementation, for example, okay. So do pay attention on array side, yeah? okay. So there will be a lot of codes, not say a lot of code, there will be one program, okay, that uses collections, ADP collections, so you must read it, you must know, you must follow, dry run the code, and print up the output, that means you must write the output, okay? So that's basically what you have to do. So practical one, practical two, point five, okay? So these are the things that you have to go through. Code wise is simple. Make sure you know what is a loop. All right. Make sure you know how to read an array. Okay. Those kind of things. Okay. Uh, make sure you understand how to read your if then else. Okay. Make sure you know how to read your parameters. Okay, that's for code lock. All right, so you must know what are the parameters going into the function, what are the return value, 
choose. And then only you write down the return value. Now, there's no computer, no use of any electronic devices, so you have to figure out in your head what is the output. Okay? Alright, so that's all for your midterm. Any questions? Do you have any questions? Can I? So next Monday, all right, your midterm will start at 12.30. Got enough time huh, for you guys to walk? Yeah, 12.30, one hour, 12.30 to one thirty. All right? Okay? All right, so today I'm going to go through chapter 6. Uh, and also chapter 7 for your replacement class afterwards, okay? So if you are ready, then you can continue. Now, last week, we finished with chapter 5. Okay, link implementations. Huh? So today we're going to take a look at recursive. All right, recursive is a very short area. So we might finish early today. So if I finish early, then I'll let you go. All right. So recursive, take a look at the image here. What do you see? Okay. If the same image on the painting, right? Isn't it? Okay. So, recursive mean we try to repeat certain thing again and again. Alright? We want to repeat certain thing again and again. Now, let me give you an analogy. Alright? Let's decide to solve something. Okay? Let's decide to find a solution or come up with uh, some uh, solutions. Huh? Okay, the problem is world hunger. Okay, world hunger. All right, can I can I solve world hunger? Can you solve world hunger? Can I? Know? Okay, can you? Well, world is too big. Okay, so now let's reduce it. Okay. My problem is to solve hunger, so let's narrow down to Asia, okay? The world is too big, huh? so maybe we will come down to Asia, okay? So do you think we can solve world um, Asian hunger problem? Hmm? Asia is still a lot of countries, huh? okay? So never mind, let's come down to Malaysia itself. So do you think you're able to solve the problem? Hunger problem? Hmm? It's still too big, huh? Alright. So let's narrow down to Slango. Right? We just had an election. <laughs> Alright, so people can mobilize, huh? Oh, okay. So how? Can you solve Slango's hunger problem? Problem is the same. Hunger problem. Okay? And you might find Slango also too big. Okay? You cannot find solution. Go down. How about college? Avatar UMT. Can we solve students' hunger problem? Okay? Maybe we can. Alright? <laughs> Go back. <laughs> oh. Okay, correct. Can we... Can you solve hunger problem? Alright, maybe there's a lot of students. I my salary cannot now. Alright? Right enough. Uh, but can I can I solve your hunger problem? You. I buy food for you every day. Okay, for example. Alright, can I solve one person? Canada. Yeah, so let's say you pick one person, okay, 
to feed every day. You buy food share, for example. You can, right? If everybody do that, what happened? You empty, right? Ta empty, no problem. Student going hunger, okay? So same thing. Every you know, see in Selangor do that, no problem. All right. Now same thing, okay? Every you know, see in Malaysia do that, no problem, okay? Not just university, let's say neighborhood also. Okay, I know that family got not enough food. If one family help another family, do you think Malaysia will have some the problem or not? No. Can we take that up again? One country help another country? Can, isn't it? Alright. So can we take the same solution, bring it up to the world level? Can we solve it? Alright, so exactly the same thing. We have a programming problem, right, that we want to solve, but it's too big. What we do? We go to a smaller, we scale it down. We scale it down until finally we have direct solution. Once we have direct solution, alright, we do some calculation, we've already got results, isn't it? We bring it up to the next level. Same results, okay? We bring it up to the next level. We do some calculations. That result, we bring it up until we solve the the world problem, the top problem. So that's how recursive works. As you can see in this picture, right? So the guy is painting. He is painting the same fingers painting, right? So same problem. We are just scaling down we are making it smaller why we are making it smaller so we can find the solution what kind of solution direct solution no need to make a lot of calculation direct solution all right so that's what recursive is all about in a nutshell huh? all right so here you need to know what is the concept of recursion all right how to solve a problem using a recursion or recursive, okay? Trace the recursive method and analyze the efficiency, okay? So let's go through in terms of what is the concept, okay? It is a problem solving process that break problem into identical but smaller problem, right? Imagine uh, world hunger, now just hunger among your friends, okay? Small one, okay? Eventually, you reach the smallest problem where there is a direct solution. Using the solution enable you to solve the previous problem. So eventually, the original problem is solved, okay? Now, recursion is an alternative to iterative, okay? Do you understand the word iterative? Iterative, we use loop. What kind of loop will be used for Java programming? We have while loop, for loop, if then else loop, if then else is a loop. Is it? No. <laughs> if then else is a condition, loop is to be. Correct or not? Huh? Alright. It is very powerful ways to solve a certain problem for which solution would be otherwise very complicated. Alright, some of the terms that you have to take a look. Alright, recursion, recursive, okay. So let's take a look at the definitions, uh, the terms. Uh. Recursion is the process of solving a problem by reducing it to smaller version, okay. Alright, recursive definition something is defined in terms of a smaller version of itself okay now you see when you when i say let's solve hunger problem you stop to the last person right okay should i go down go down go down any further of oh, animal got 
got food or not. Oh, animal, I know you go down to bacteria, single cell or cancer. Right? Where to stop? Right? Where to stop? Because we can go down, break it down into smaller sections, isn't it? So we must stop somewhere. So in this case, we decided to stop. When I come to one person, I stop. Alright? Yeah? One person, I stop. Okay? I don't go down to microorganism, you know, single cell organism, atom and all that. Okay? I don't go, go down any further. Okay? So, stop case, stopping case allows us, okay, to stop the recursive process. When you find the direct solution, when the solution is obtained, you stop. Alright, so this is known as stopping case, very stop. Okay, then we have recursive case, alright. The case in a recursive algorithm in which the problem is specified as a smaller version of the original problem. Okay? So algorithm of course, the recursive algorithm means you have to use the recursive method in a smaller version of itself. Okay? Method, a method that call itself is known as recursive method. Okay? Recursive method. Okay? Alright. So now let's take a look at example. How do you find factorial? Okay? For factorial, okay? A4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is equal to 24. Alright? Okay? So what we do, how do we calculate? Okay? Right? How do we calculate? So using a iterative process, an algorithm, uh, iterative, what do you do? You use a loop. Your n value will be minus in one, isn't it? All right, you minus one, you multiply it, isn't it? All right? So that's why usually what you're going to do is that four times three times two times one. Okay? Now, for recursive method, okay? What we're going to do is that if I want to know what is a 4 factorial, I need to know my third or 3 factorial. Right? If I want to know my 4 factorial, I must know my 3 factorial. Okay? So 4 times 3 factorial. Okay? If I want to know my 3 factorial, I must know my 2 factorial. So, 3 times 2 factorial. Okay? If I want to know what is my 2 factorial, is 2 times 1 factorial. If I want to know what is 1 factorial, 1 times 0 factorial. Alright? So, what is the 0 factorial? Well, now I have a solution. Now I have a solution. It's a direct solution. Zero factorial is one. All right. I already at the end. This is my stop case. All right. Finish. I already got my answer. All right. So one is my zero factorial. So what we do? We take this solution. We go to the previous problem. Alright, so my previous problem is 1 factorial. So 1 factorial times 0 factorial. Now I have the answer for it. 0 factorial is 1. Alright, so 1 factorial is 1 times 1 equal to 1. Okay, so now I know 1 factorial is 1. Okay, so... I take the answer, I go to my previous problem, which is 2 factorial. 2 factorial is equal to 2 times 1 factorial. So I have answer for 1 factorial, which is 1. Alright? So my 2 factorial is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2. And 
we continue until we find our answer. All right. <coughs> the other fact. All right. So I can write my formula n factorial. Okay. And any number factorial will be n times. Okay. Open bracket n minus one factorial where n have to be more than zero. So this is my formula. The other fact. Okay. So where's my stop case or stopping case is zero factorial. That's why I stop. All right? Yeah? Because I have direct answer. Answer is that. Okay? So I take the answer and I go up. Okay? So this is my formula. All right? So the principle for your recursive, every recursive, Definitions must have one or more stopping case. You must have the stopping case. Otherwise, recursively, we will break down the problem to smaller value. Okay? Smaller parts. Okay? There's no stopping. So it's like infinite loop like that. Alright? Then, recursive. Okay? Recursive case must eventually be reduced to stopping case. Stopping case stops the recursive. So that is very important. Now, all right? Okay, so let's take a look at the algorithm. Okay? So the algorithm. I'm going to run the code first. Okay, so I'm going to enter 4. My factorial is 24. Okay, so that's the answer. So if we take a look at the code, alright, I have a method, and the method name is factorial, parameter is n. So I say if my n equal to 0, we return 1. Okay? So if my okay, if n equal to 0, I return 1. So why is that? Remember, our n value here, 0, we return 1. Correct? Okay. So that is our stopping case. So I return 1. So otherwise, what do I do? Alright, otherwise, what do I do? This is my formula. Alright, this is my formula. N multiply N minus 1. Okay. You see that? N multiply N minus 1. So you understood, right? This one? Okay. Alright. So, but here we have the word factorial. So what are we doing? This is recursive. We are calling recursive method. Huh? So what happened is that N initially was 4. Huh? So 4 minus 1 will be 3. So 3, this line will go back to the method, call back. Huh? All right? This one will call itself again. Now with the parameters 3. Okay? So it goes and check whether this is equal to 0. L3 is not equal to 0, so it performed this, okay? You understand? So 3 times factorial 3 minus 1, so factorial 2. So it goes up again. Call itself again until we have n equal to 0, okay? So now, um, I'm not sure whether I updated you can check on your 
Alright, you can check or you, you can Google it in fact, eh? you can check uh, on their Okay, let me copy it Visualize it. Alright, for your 
program stack. Stack, remember, we learned stack, right? So what is the concept of stack? Last thing, first sound, right? So same thing, yeah? So here, recursive call. So when you have come recursive call with the value n value 2, all right? So you need to find out, okay? The previous value, or right? So you call stack n equal to 1, then n equal to 0. So once you finish with the value with n equal to 0, okay? Then you return to n equal to 1, you return to n equal to, and finally you can get the answer. Okay, so this is another way that we can use recursive call. Alright, so now another thing is that writing recursive call is one thing, then we also have to trace it. Do you know what's a uh, dry run? Okay, you trace your codes, isn't it? You trace your algorithm without using the concurrent. Okay, so here also we want to trace the recursive, all right, algorithm. So how to trace it? Okay, so we use what we call a recursive trace or box trace. Okay, each box corresponds to a recursive call. In each box, you indicate the value argument and also the statement that were executed. So you will have arrow down to go down or we, we call the recursive method and arrow up indicate the return value. Alright, so let's take a look for the factorial. Alright, so suppose we have factorial 3. So your n value is equal to 3. So this is the first box, right? You need to find out what is the end value and also the return value, okay? So n equal to 3. If n equal to 3, our return value will be 3 times factorial 2. Is that correct? This one will be n minus n minus 1, isn't it? Right, so if n is 3, 3 minus 1 is 2. So the next box, okay, next recursive call is when n equal to 2. Alright, so our return value will be 2 multiplied factorial 1. So this is n value. Huh? So n equal to 1, so this is written. And what is the factorial? 0, factorial 0, n value is 0, then we return 1. Okay, so 1 is the result. We return, this is the stop case, stopping case. We return 1 to this. 1 times 1 is equal to 1. We return 1 to this recursive call. Alright, so this is 1 here. So 2 times 1, we return 2 to here. And as you can see, 3 times 2 is 6. That's your answer. Alright, so we draw a box for each recursive method. Inside it, what we write? Okay. We write value of argument. And also statement to be executed. This is your recursive statement. Alright, so this is our recursive statement. Alright, can you understand? Alright. So you have to think in terms of the recursive method have unlimited copy of itself. Okay. Alright, recursive, every recursive call has its own code and its own stack of uh, parameters and local variable. Uh. Alright, so upon completing a particular recursive call, the control goes back to the calling environment which is the previous call. Alright, so that is very important. So now let's do this. Okay, how to write okay, a recursive method. Alright, how to write a recursive method for this? Right, give you two minutes. Take a look at it. So 
this one is basically, all right, if I have n equal to 5, for example, so 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 5. So this is what we're going to do. So how do you write a recursive method? Go to zero. Okay, when it goes 
close to zero, what happened? Oh, we don't have to do this also, isn't it? Yeah? Why? This is n equal to 1. So n equal to 1, we return 1 already. Actually, we don't have to. Alright? So now we have 1. So can you see that? How it goes up? Okay. Now, box trace. Okay, let's do the box traces. N equal to 3. So we do 2, 1. N equal to 1, return 1. Okay, can you see the value now? This one is N minus 1. This one, N minus 1. This, you solve it, you can solve n divide n isn't it? So n is 3. So 1 over 3 is what? 0 0.3333 isn't it? Okay, so we can get solution here. So similar to n here is 1 over n which is n over 2. 0 0.5. Right? Okay? Understood? Okay, so this is our trace box. Huh? Alright, so if you check our code for recursive, you use if then else. Okay, you use if then else. You don't use an iterative method. Okay. Alright, so all these are implementation, how we can implementation. Now the general structure is you will have if stopping case is reached, else you call the recursive method. Okay? Sometimes what we will do is that you will perform a common steps. You check your recursive case, alright? Then you call the recursive method. Alright? Sometimes Stopping case got no action performed. You just will have a recursive case. Alright. Recursively you solve the problem. So how? Let's take a look at this. Okay. Now. See how to write. How to implement recursive method. Now the street structure you can do. Alright. So these are the different, different structure. So first one. You will see countdown. Countdown mean you will have 10, 9, 8, and so forth. Okay? So if my n value is 10, then it will be 10. Huh? If my n value is 5, it will start from 5. So is n equal to 1? Okay? No means, then you print the value, you minus 1, you come back here to call back again recursive call, call itself again, okay? So you see, you have to consider the stopping case first, then only you have to print line. Now, things to observe is here, you have print line, here you have print line, okay? So let's change the code a bit, maybe we can apply a different structure. So you do your Recursive case. Alright, you check your recursive case. You print the value. Then you have recursive call. So what happened? We remove the redundant print line. Okay. Recursive case is checked. When n is 1, this method will invoke the recursive call counter down, count down 0. Okay. Okay. Ah, this is another method. So we print line first, prints the value, and then you check your recursive case, and then you do your recursive call. All right. So those are the, some of the methods you can apply. Yeah? Okay. Alright, so box trace, 
Okay, so here we just display a little thing. We don't, you know, return a value. Okay, so box trace, if there's no return value, you just put the arrow up only. No need to put the value in here, for example. Okay. All right, so let's say countdown three. We display first, display three. We check what is the value is n is more than one, right? Yes, then we recursive call. n minus one is two. Now we go to the next recursive call. When n is equal to two, we display, we print first. Display two. Then you do your recursive call. So when is n equal to 1? If it n equal to 1, we just exit the loop, isn't it? Right? So consider we don't do anything. It's not a loop. Sorry, I shouldn't be using the loop. But we exit the condition. Alright? So we don't do a recursive call. We just display the value. And then now done already, we just... Go back to the previous one. Alright? Okay, so this is how you design your recursive method. List all stopping case, stopping base, also uh, refer to the same thing. Huh? List the recursive cases, arrange the case in correct sequence. So now let's take a look at this example. Alright? Now if you see this example, Alright, this is the mathematical function of n and k that compute the number of possible co combination for selecting k object out of n and is defined as this. Okay? Now, if k equal to 0, you have to return 1. If k equal to n, we have to return 1. If k is more than n, you have to return 0. Otherwise, you do a recursive form. Okay? So how are we going to write this? We know there is a three stopping case. So how can we write this? If k equal to 0 and k equal to n, we return 1. Alright? Otherwise, if k is more than n, we return 0. Okay? Otherwise, of course, we just return this entire formula. n minus 1, k minus 1. Okay? The parameter is n, n, k, right? So, we reduce the value by 1. Or based on the formula given. Alright, got it? Okay, so for recursive processing your array, now we can process the first element, or we can process the last element. Or we can divide them into two. Okay? Now what is this? Array, yeah? we are referring to array. Okay? 
Now, if it first, less than last. So what are we doing here? Okay, we are calling. Recursive call, huh? calling display array one again with array with my first index plus one and my last index. Okay, so in this case I have ten. Okay, I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Okay, this is array. Alright, I want to display the value. This is my first. This is my last. Can you understand? Okay. So, of course, first is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Alright? Okay, so let's take a look at the code. Alright, so I have array coming in. My first index and my last index. Okay? So, I have first equal to 0. My last is equal to 5. Correct? Okay. So let's see. Is first less than last? Okay. First statement. Our stopping case. Alright. First less than last. First, less than last. Yes. Zero is less than five. Correct. So what do you do? You send the array. All right. You send this array. But my first will become what? My first value is now what? First is plus one. Okay? So I go here. We forgot, huh? We're supposed to print this. The first line. Line number 30. Okay? We have to display first. So I print it. Then print the reading. Okay? Now, I go up. My first is one, okay? My first is one, right? What am I printing? System dot out dot print array first. So this is my first, I print, got space, I print. Next is stopping fake. Here I print out, huh? If number one less than number five, yeah, so recursive call. So recursive call, what happened? First number. Okay, now my first is second, correct? So what happened? I print for 30. Then I do this. Alright, do you understand how we do? Alright, recursive call. Here, what are we doing? You see, our print is different area. Now, how we are doing? We recursive call first because we are see here last minus one. So we are checking from the last value. All right. So what happened? I don't print. My print is here. Okay. My print is at the back. I don't change my first. I change my last. Okay? Then only I print from here and then I roll back, print, 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 and print. Okay? Okay, third one is that we divide into half. Okay? We divide into half and then we print. Okay? So do check through. Alright. So 
dos a de erase. Okay, last spot. Oh, not exactly last spot. Okay, this is Tower of Hanoi. Do you know what is Tower of Hanoi? All right, now go to your Google, your Google Classroom's link. It's not working. I didn't realize until this morning. All right. This link is not working. So, again, you can Google it.
temporary storage and big one and put it to the sink. Alright? Okay? So now let's see what happened. So now I already done this part. Okay? So following the rules, okay, I need to bring this to here. Right? So what I can do is that I can move the smaller one to A and bring the second disc on top of the first disc. So here, I move here, here, and here. That's it. Seven more. Okay? Alright. What if I have more? What if I have more? What if I have four discs? A. How come we have three discs in pole B? Oh. 